The third part of the takeoff performance is uh, ground run. And in, the, in this section, we will um, calculate the ground run distance. OK, we know the takeoff distance in total uh, it, it is comprised of the ground run distance and the airborne distance. Now let's focus on the ground run distance. And if we are looking at the aircraft in the bottom, it's moved from one station to the other within a time separation of delta t, and the distance is delta s. Um, okay, so then delta s equals v times delta t. And now let's do some tricks. And if v times delta v and then delta t need to be divided by delta v. Okay, so now what we do is and do some manipulation, get this uh, relation here, delta v divided by delta t. Now, um, we know delta in mathematically indicates a finite change in a quantity. And now we assume the change is small incremental, we can replace delta by d. So we have dv dt equals v times dv ds. And we already know dv divided by dt is v dot, that's the acceleration. Okay, so uh, from the previous slides, when we analyzing the forces acting on the aircraft, we have acceleration is related with thrust, drag, rolling, um, rolling friction drag and the weight component due to the sloped runway. And also, we just derived acceleration equals v times dvds. So we combine these two equations together, and uh, we get an equation showing here. And we know d and l are related with COCD. And uh, for simply, uh, for the uh, Easier case is uh, gamma r equals zero, which means uh, runway has no slope; it's horizontal. Okay, so once plugging all those um, d and l and gamma r, we have a simplified relation. Okay, and we can further uh, do some manipulation. Put c l c d together, we get this relation. Still, we can work further. And this is what we had just now. And now what we do is uh, make ds explicit. So ds is a function of v times dv, is it? OK, now let's see how it works. So we can do, since we already have ds, and then the take of distance, we just do the integration about ds. And on the right hand side, we have uh, integration of dv from 0 to v. And so this looks quite um, complicated now. So we need to do some further simplification. We assign C1 equals something and C2 equals another part of the denominator. And then the integration of ds looks much more straightforward. 1 over C1 plus C2 times V square. Okay. And we can do a bit further. We first integrate. Uh, v times dv, we get this part, and now we can see uh, we have v v square in the denominator, and and the integration is against v square. Okay, so now it's more much more better. Oh, okay. Due to the mathematics, if we do integration of c1 plus c2 is x square, one over that. And we can get this relation. That's from the calculus. We just need to remember it. And then for the integration of s, we can have 1 over 2c2 ln something. Yeah. And we already know what is c1 and c2. So now we have s is related with c1 and c2. We know c1 and c2 uh, can be expressed by these two relations and just plug them in, we can have the ground to run distance. The equation looks very complicated, but don't worry about that. We will have some examples later. You can plug in all the numbers and do the calculation. Okay. So if we further manipulate the above equation, we can get the takeoff distance s equals a very big right hand side.
Now let's see an example of um, an aircraft and how uh, can we calculate the ground to round distance. So let's see the example first of all. Consider commercial twin turbofan transport aircraft with the following parameters. So the lift off speed is uh, 145 knot. The uh, maximum takeoff gross weight is 175.7 tons. And the wing platform area is 285.6 square meters. And the wingspan is 447.57 meter. The also one efficiency number is 0 0.7. This, uh, this efficiency number is related with uh, in, induced drag coefficient, is it right? And the ground effect factor is 0 0.4. So which is quite small, which means the ground effect is uh, very pronounced. And the CD for fuselage and the CD for undercarriage, CD for flaps at takeoff setting, you can see, because as I mentioned earlier, the flaps are usually applied during the takeoff run. And this is used to generate a lot of lift, more lift. And in the meantime, the drag is also uh, increased. So you can see the three components of the drag, and all these three will be contributed to the parasitic drag. And a coefficient of rolling coefficient mu is 0 0.02, which is very small, which is an equivalent to the um, wheels on a concrete runway. And a static engine thrust for one engine is 50,600, uh, 50, sorry. And you can see uh, for one engine, so for two engines, um, we need to multiply two. And that static, static engine thrust, what does that mean? That means the, this is a thrust at the beginning of the um, ground run. That's the, uh, when the aircraft has a speed of zero. And the density, air density at the runway is 1.226 kilogram per meter cube. The question is estimate the distance required for the aircraft to reach the lift off speed. Okay, so this is the ground run takeoff distance we have uh, already derived. And the mass is uh, uh, 175.7 tons. We also know the um, takeoff weight and uh, the aspect ratio. So. CD has two components as we reviewed earlier, which is parasitic drag and in induced drag. The parasitic drag again is uh, c contributed by the um, aircraft frame drag and also the undercarriage drag and the drag from the flap. Okay, since um, it's taking up procedure, CD um, is uh, reduced due to the ground effect, so we need to times the uh, KGE, and then we get a CG num CD number. The thrust, we have two engines for the aircraft, so the uh, thrust we need to turn by two. In total, we have 494.66 kilonewton, okay? So by using all these numbers available now, we can get the lift off uh, ground run distance is 1.12 kilometer. And remember, when we calculate this lift off distance or ground run distance, the result is based on a constant thrust. Is that we are not changing the thrust? The thrust is has its maximum maximum value, but in reality, the velocity changes with uh, an the thrust changes with velocity. And you can see it's uh, following a quadratic variation. And if you can plot this curve, you can see if the velocity increases, then the thrust actually decreases. So during the ground run, there's a decreasing thrust across the procedure. Okay, so if we use the thrust the the velocity and uh, lift off velocity plug into the thrust quadratic thrust equation we can have the lift off thrust which is 206.8 kilonewton which is smaller than static case which 
yeah, so about uh, 14 kilonewton smaller. And you've used a takeoff uh, take uh, thrust, then the total lift off distance is 1.37 kilometer. That's true because um, the thrust is smaller, then you need to take a longer distance to take off, which makes sense, right? So there are some points to consider regarding the variation of the thrust during the runway. And it is clear that the significant variation in the thrust produced by the high pass turbofan or a pro propeller with forward speed has a large effect on the takeoff distance of the aircraft and therefore must be taken into account. A more accurate analysis would need to take into account the temporal dynamics of the engine thrust as it accelerated along the runway. This can be done analytically by solving the full ordinary differential equation or numerically using temporal discretization method. A more thorough analysis also allows one to take into account runway altitude, ambient air temperature, runway slope, head and the tail winds on the required ground run. Now let's study the effect of a headwind and a tailwind. And if there's no wind, the aircraft takes off like this. And if there's a headwind, so the um, relative speed or the air speed of the aircraft is increased. So it takes a shorter distance to take off and can can lift off with a higher angle. And however, in a tailwind, um, the aircraft takes off with, with a shorter height and a longer runway distance. Okay, so on the headwind, the ground run distance decreases and the, the lift of ground speed also decrease. And the drag, however, will increase because it has um, larger air speed, relative air speed, and uh, on the tailwind, the ground run distance increases and and also the lift of ground speed also increases. On the tailwind, the maximum allowable takeoff weight may have to be reduced. The climb gradient will also be reduced and it could result in a controlled flight into terrain due to an inability to clear an obstacle in time. 